And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Nations. Nations is a big game, although the box didn't need to be this big. Um, Nations is a civilization game, but it's a civilization based on cards. You're not moving pieces across a map and expanding an empire. Instead, you have a player board in front of you that you will be putting uh, cards on and uh, utilizing those cards. It's kind of a worker placement game too. A lot of different things. I'm going to show you a somewhat uh, kind of in-depth uh, uh, rules explanation of Nations, and then we'll be back. There are two main boards for the game, and then there's a player board. Here you can see your player board, and I'll talk a little bit about that more. There's a main board here. This board here will keep track of what uh, era you're in, antiquity, medieval, renaissance, industrial age. The game goes about to the late 1800s from in time frame. Each age has two turns and then a small scoring phase until the final turn, which there is a, a big scoring phase. Here you can pick basically your difficulty level. So if one player, like Jason, is better than everybody else, you can make him play on a more difficult level. We also have player turn order here. And then over here are, is a track for stability to show how stable your empire is. Over here is a war track to show how powerful your army is in combat. There's a spot here for a event card and a spot here for a war card. And on the outside of the board, you can see a track here that's basically your knowledge, so you'll keep track of your knowledge. Players will start with their own player board. You can play on one side, which is a, a symmetrical side. Uh, so for example, here I have Rome, here's China, but you can also play on a asymmetrical side in which each person might have a special ability or different things. For example, China has more people to start the game with, and if they pass first each round, they get a, an extra food. Players are going to get different resources in the game. You'll start here with five different workers and some food and some ore, some money and some victory points um, based on what it says in the bottom of your card here. You also start with some buildings that are printed on the board. Now, as the main game plays, each turn of the game, you are going to be trying to increase your production of different resources. And by doing that, you're going to be placing people on these different buildings. If I place a person on this building, for example, every turn I'm going to get one knowledge and one coin for having places here. In order to place this there, I need to pay one ore. So ore is useful because it allows you to get workers out. If I wanted to put two people here, I could, then I would get two knowledge and two coins per turn. You see this one gives one ore, one coin. This increases me two on the warfare track, but I have to pay a food each turn. If I take this off, the warfare track would go down. Here, or and um, wheat here, this would increase me one on the stability track, and then give me a coin each turn. You'll also notice at the bottom of the cards, there is victory points. That means at the end of the game, if this building has one person on it, I will get one victory point. Buildings will get better as the game goes by, and allow me to have more victory points. I will be able to, each turn, uh, you can take free resources or you can add another worker. You can pick any worker you want. If you take a worker from this side, your stability goes down by three permanently. If you take a worker from this side, you'll have to pay an extra three food each turn of the game. Now players, as I said, will get some free resources and that's really where the difficulty level goes. The lower your difficulty to more resources or you can add another worker to your, your group. There will also be an event card drawn each round. This event card will tell you how much food everyone has to spend because apparently you must stick this in every game that exists now. It will also tell you how many architects are available that turn. This one has no architects on this card. It could have one, two, or three architects. And then you see how many players are playing. Let's say it's a four player game. We would add two architects that are available this turn. If we turned over this card, it would, there would be three because this card showed one. And in a four player game, there's another architect. 
These cards also will show something that happens at the end of the round. Whoever has the least military will have to return one of their workers. Whoever has the, the highest ability is going to regain all the victory point that they lost to a war this round, if they lost any. And so these cards will change. You know, here maybe the least military will lose three knowledge. And everybody, except for the person with the least ability, will get three extra food, thanks to the code of Hammurabi. Now, the game, each round of the game, is going to be players are going to be taking actions. And most of the time your action will be placing a worker on one of your buildings or buying a card from up here. Now this supply of cards is going to have different cards placed on it depending on what era. And in the halfway point of eras, um, the bottom two rows are wiped out and if there's any cards in the third row. Also, depending on how many players in the game, depends on how many columns you use. Like I'm showing a five player game here, but a four player game would only go up to here, a three player game. Two player game would only have this three by four grid. When you get, take one of these cards, you have to pay the price, one, two, or three, depending on what row it is in. And what building and what you do depends on what you take. If you take one of these buildings, you can see these buildings are better than your original buildings. They can also get you more victory points at the end game if you have workers on them. So when I take one of these buildings, let's say I take the, the library, I can place it here in my area, but I'm gonna have to cover up a spot where I already have something. I could cover up a spot where I have this axe pen, and whenever you cover up a spot, all the workers on that spot come home. But this library, I probably wouldn't cover up the axe pen, but I would probably cover up the temple. Because this is just like the temple, but it's a little bit better. It gives me two knowledge and one coin, rather than one knowledge and one coin. So you can buy these. You can also buy military folks and cover up buildings or other militaries with them. And you can see that their military strength gets greater as the game goes by. Another thing you can do is you can conquer one of these colonies. There are different colonies available. To conquer a colony, you need to have warfare equal to or higher than the number printed on here. So to conquer Macedonia, for example, I would need a four or higher military. To conquer the Hindu Kush, I would need a nine or higher military. Once you do that, it's going to give you a bonus, and you have a spot on your board, uh, on the player board, to put two colonies. Above two colonies, you'll notice an advisor. You might want to buy an advisor as the game progresses. In fact, you'll probably replace them with other advisors. Each advisor will give you special abilities. Like, for example, Cyrus the Great. If you buy a colony this round, you'll get an extra $3. Why Sun Tzu, each turn, when you take your first action, you get to take two actions in a row, which can be a big deal. Another thing you can get um, on this board is, will show up, will be Wonders of the World. You can see here are the pyramids, and over here is a terracotta army, and so there's different, and down here is Stonehenge. When I buy this, I'm going to place it on my board under my worker under construction. Now, if there are any available architects in the architect pool at the uh, on my turn, for one of my actions, I can take one of those architects, place it here, and pay the ore that it shows. So here I would have to place three architects, each time paying one ore. When I'm finished, this will come down, and I will place it under one of my spots for Wonders of the World. Each wonder will give victory points at the end of the game. This one's zero, but it gives me six knowledge and four food when I build this one. While the pyramids would give me three points at the end of the game, gives me two money every round, but I lose two food each round. And here, the Terracotta Army gives me one military, and when it's ready, whoever has the least ability is going to lose four coins. Or the Hanging Gardens. Gives me two food and one stability, but I lose one ore each turn. But it's also worth a point at the end of the game. Another thing you can buy up here is a war. Now, when you buy a war, this is an unusual thing. Only one war can be bought per round. doesn't matter who buys it. So let's say I buy Warring States. When I buy the war, I am going to place it over here on the main board in this spot here. Now, let's say that the war, that everyone has different... Uh, military strengths here on the side of the board. When I buy the war card, whoever buys it is going to place this black token on their current military strength. At the end of a round, anybody who does not met that strength or higher is going to suffer a loss of victory points and a loss of resources shown on the card. One victory point and here you would lose three knowledge. So you can buy a war if you are a player who has low war just so that you know you don't lose anything or you can buy it if you have a lot of war just to make everybody else lose things and then finally we'll just have a couple more cards to cover there are two cards here one card is a battle card when you get 
when you buy this card, you will get resources, one of the three resources shown on the card, equal to the uh, battle number on your highest military guy. So this guy here has a military of two, but if I had replaced him with an archer, it would be four. So let's say I had an archer in place, I would get four uh, things of that type. And then these uh, golden age cards where they'll give you resources or you can pay resources to take a victory point. Once everybody has passed, they're not buying cards and they're not playing cards and or building wonders of the world, then we will go to the next phase. We'll deal with the event. Everyone has to pay food. Everyone will produce all their things from the workers that they have on buildings and pay food, etc. the things that they need to do. And then you go to the next round. After two rounds in the same era, everybody's going to score points. You get one point for every person that you are ahead of on the knowledge track. This will continue. Each time you go and you'll get bigger and better buildings. For example, let's take a look at some of the cards from the, uh, the fourth era and see how they, they just get better and better as time goes by. The Crimean War here, you'll lose 10 coins. Uh, Marie Curry gives you two private architects, engineers each round and gives you four. Um, a rifleman, look, they give, have a military strength of nine. Uh, the penal colony here uh, gives four, four food and two stability every round. And there's just all, here's a radio, there's all sorts of cool things that you can get and they'll get better as time goes by. At the end of the game, you will get any points that your colonies, that your buildings, that your wonders might have given. You will also take all your resources, all your military, all your stability, add it together, divide it by 10 and get that many bonus points, plus any points that you've gotten or throughout the game. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Nations also has a solitaire option. There's some tiles that the game comes with that you can draw tiles to see what your opponent is playing. I haven't tried that. Uh, the, the game, I will say this, I don't know that I'll ever play it with five players. I have not played it with five, but the most I played it with is four, and that was a very long game. A two-player game is not bad, actually. A two-player game lasts maybe uh, 90 minutes. The game says 40 minutes per player, so I, I would assume as, as I play it more and more that we can shorten that time length down. Now, what do I think about this game? It's, it's very interesting. This game is going to be compared quite a bit to Through the Ages, which is a very good civilization game uh, that had a lot of similarities to this one where you bought cards and put them in front of you and did different things. Although the games, while they have a lot of similarities, are also quite different. This is a much more streamlined game. There are many things about this game that I like. I like all the different cards. I like the asymmetrical sides of the board much better because I like to be different than other people over the course of the game. I really like the different options you have. I want to buy an advisor because it gives me a special ability. I want to try to get my military up to conquer colonies and to irritate the other players. I want to get some buildings out there. As the buildings get better, they're more powerful, but they also cost more ore. Constant watching the different resources that I have. That I found this to be a very enjoyable game as I manipulated all these things. There is some minor things that I wasn't so keen on in the game. Uh, one of those is the cards that come out on the player boards. I, I, first of all, I think it's great. I mean, there is a stack here for, it just is a stack for Era 2, for example. In a two player game, you will use, um, let's see, 12 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll use this many out of this many. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, actually it was 24, because you'll go through the Era twice. But still, that's, you're not using nearly all the cards, so the variety is huge. And even in a four-player or five-player game, you're not, gonna, you're not nearly going to go through all the cards. So every game is going to play very differently. However, it is possible sometimes through card draw that you can just totally get messed over by what cards come out. You're like, okay, this round I'm going to need to put some better buildings in my village, and no buildings show up, or maybe one and someone else buys it. Or you say, oh, okay, this time, you know, my whole goal here was get my military up so I could go conquer colonies and no colonies come. Uh, or, uh, you know, you're ready to go to war, no wars come. It's, that's very possible in this game. And I don't know, some people say that's not that big of a deal, but it can be sometimes because in a game like this, it, it could mess you over based on your strategy. But I think as the game progresses, it should balance out since you put out the cards eight times. My biggest problem with Nations is that the scoring seems kind of anticlimactic. I am having fun the entire time I'm playing Nations. I'm sitting there and I'm building buildings and getting advisors and doing this and war and this and ah, oh, cool. And we get to the end and we kind of point and you have like 20, 30 points and you get them from a few different places on buildings. You get them for workers on buildings. It just doesn't seem to match the game itself. 
Now, as I the, the first time it was really a disconnect, but in, in subsequent playings, it, it was like, oh, okay, I'm getting used to the scoring, but it still doesn't sit in my gut like I wish it would. I still never feel like I had a glorious victory. It's more like. Oh, okay. I guess I was in the right spot at the right time. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's just me, but it just, I felt there was a slight disconnect between the scoring and, and, and the actual playing of the game. But I don't mind that so much. I'm just saying that I want the ending of the game to be spectacular and exciting, but the actual game was better than the ending. So I like it. It's a little long and um, it doesn't have the map and everything like Sid Meier Civilization does and such, but I do like this. And I know here comes my heretical statement. I do like this better than Through the Ages. I do. Through the Ages had a lot more manipulative pieces, probably had a better depth to it than this one does. But this one's streamlined. And I think once you know what you're doing, uh, this game, even though it's long, I think you could play a four player game in two and a half hours if you really got moving and kept going. And I, the variety, I like this quite a bit. So my final recommendation is this is a very good civilization game. I very much enjoy it. I do not think it is great because, they, like I said, the ending leaves me a little flat and sometimes things can happen and sometimes the events can show up that are like this and smacking all the players around. And I don't mind an event every once in a while it smacks players around, but getting a bunch of them in a row can be a real drag. So I almost would maybe go through and say, here's a pile of negative events, here's a pile of positive, let's mix them up and take some of each. And I would enjoy that more. But all that being said, it sounds like I've been nitpicky, and I am nitpicky because I love this theme, and I love this idea, and this game is very good. So, should you get it, if you like the Civilization thing and all, you definitely need to give this one a try. It's really cool, has a lot of cool things to it. I suspect of an expansion that adds in a fifth era at some point in time. Who knows, but it has that, it has a worker placement idea to it, uh, collecting in and resources, and it's really cool when you get a building and you're like, ah, oh, look what this building does. Look what my advisor special ability. Wow, look how high my military is. A lot of cool things to like about this game. That's Nations. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs> Shut the door! <laughs>